perfect. Do you want to see the noise me actually? When Bruce Buffer announces the fighter's style, that really actually frustrates really? me. Like he he's knows. a kung fu fighter. It's like, no, he's not. It's a lie. All no, of he's not. Lies. I think it falls in line with the tradition of the UFC yeah. where it started off. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah. I totally in agree. In 2021, yeah. it's, not, it's not applicable. This is one reason why I wanted to introduce, we, me and Brad were talking about a belt system for MMA. And I think that would be something which could be creditable if read out by... Because like you say, they're a jiu-jitsu black belt, great. They're a jiu-jitsu black belt, but that usually means they're in a gi. That doesn't really translate in terms of skill-wise. It does, obviously, in terms of the submission, but the skill of a gi does not transfer into, um, into the modern MMA game. Whereas if it was, this person is a you're right fifth degree wrong. black belt in MMA... You're right and you're then wrong. Then you have... Oh, yeah, say there's always going to be a, a right and wrong side to it, but... If when, the person is a black belt in the gi, mm -hmm. they're still a huge threat. Oh, massively. And they're not going to let the fact that they're but a black belt in the gi... It does that advertise that they don't strike. This is what I mean. Like, if you're... No, someone like, but okay, if, here's if you're a, a specialist, example. if yeah. you're a specialist, mm -hmm. and you've trained 15 years in jiu-jitsu and three or four years in boxing, mm -hmm. um, or you're a wrestler since you're like six years old, like Colby Covington, and you've done maybe five years of kickboxing. I think it does. I think it does help the sport having this that variation. Yeah, I think it does help it. Yeah, because like yeah. we, from what we know about the bullshito and fucking McDojos, kung fu doesn't really have a part in modern style MMA. Usually, when a fighter starts trying to do kung fu shit, it's actually when they get punched in the face. Who's man. introduced as kung fu? I've never heard. Currently, of. Tony Ferguson is introduced as a kung is fu. Is he fighter. really? Do you know what he actually is? Even and so is John even Jones. Though John Jones. John Jones doesn't even announce him. He's a kung fu fighter. Genuinely. It's a wrestler. Well, the guy that wrestles and boxes is Muay Thai yeah, and that's it. But because kung fu is the fun one, it's the fucking thing they can put to. Obviously, like someone like Wonder Boy is a karate fighter. And he now gets announced as a karate fighter. Someone like Gilbert Burns is introduced as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. But Burns only recently has been is one of the most fucking devastating strikers in his fucking weight class. It's gonna be exciting. It's going to be fight, fuck, yeah. crazy stuff. But introducing him as a jiu-jitsu specialist, yeah, great. But he has got lethal hands. Wouldn't it be mm. better having an MMA-represented belt system, which is what we've said. Being able to say there are a fifth and black belt in MMA means that they have covered every single base, so much so that they are devastating across all, belt, across all areas. Like, uh, what was it only recently? Like, Israel Adesanya got his purple belt. But he's had submission. Oh, mate. This is what that, I mean. that, that, that does my head like in. That, that does my head in. He's been a black belt for years. Exactly, but he is gaining like me, that accreditation Brad. so that when he enters the ring, they say he's a Brazilian. It's Jesus the same thing. as me. Brad Scott, put a black belt. Don't lean you. back. Don't Sorry. lean back, you fucking moron. Sorry, Jesus you? Christ. One, you'll break my fucking 400 pound chair. And two, is you're putting put holes in my mat. Is it there a pillow for the 400 pound chair? No, it's not a lumbar pillow, no. I might just roll my jacket up and stick it Yeah. Right, that would chill for a sec. Does it not lean back then? No, it doesn't. Oh, I thought it had a lean feature. No, you just got, happen to have got it's perfectly in between two of the aluminium. Oh, I didn't realise that. I, I thought it had like a spring in it that mm -hmm. made it lean back. Yeah, and you're almost putting holes in my mat. Oh, for oh, the fuck's sake. <laughs> that's better, I can lean back now. Yeah. My disc right, so like, where, where where is disappearing. Yeah. Where were we at? Let's go. Um, how fighters name themselves. Like, I do find it weird, like someone like Tony Ferguson saying he's a kung fu fighter. It's like... He's had, he's had what four four wins by submission, in like in the all kung fu submissions like what, the like howling dance? monkey, the yeah. monkey butt smash, rolling dance jokes, the rolling like squirrel nut pinch, <laughs> <laughs> the rat throat grab. But he's had all the best ones. Is that a tradition which needs to be phased out? Because like, it's, it's lies. Yeah, I know, but is it is the show and the pompousness of that element? Like when they say it, Nick Diaz is, is a jiu-jitsu fighter. Then comes out and out punches his opponent to the point of death. But this Don't is what I mean. mean. It's like, it's where not... is, where does that showmanship become phased out? No, <laughs> where does that showmanship get phased out into a reality-based? He's an MMA fighter. It doesn't need to be a. Kung they don't fighter. need to say this. Stuff no, they anymore. don't. They don't need to say it anymore. Like back in the day, UFC won to fucking yeah, fifteen yeah, it when it was literally different. you are a wrestler. You're wearing wrestling boots and fucking no gloves. Yeah, you're a wrestler. You come out a full gi with a fucking karate blooming headscarf on, 
you're a fucking karate guy. It's like yeah, like when um, George St. Pierre used to do it, come out in the nine bars and play them. Is it completely irrelevant? Exactly. It, it doesn't irrelevant. make you're, you're right, Joe. It doesn't make any sense. And I think that's why Conor McChrystal. I do wish sprint coach. And then he armbars his opponent. See? We well, this told is exactly him. what I mean. He was a sprinter. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> or he just runs away the whole time. Sprint away from that armbar. <laughs> Bitch! So, so we've been working on this. Well, we're, we're planning on working on a syllabus and essentially a format for an MMA package that we want to be able to try and sell, essentially. Cool. In the same way in which karate gyms sign up to, or jujitsu gyms, perfect example. If a jiu-jitsu gym buys into the Gracie pack platform, they get all of their teaching material, they get their accreditation, they can then belt people underneath the Gracie name. If there was an MMA foundation, which would then also, it would revolutionize MMA because it would make it, because at the moment it's not even sanctioned, is it? It's not, um, there's no body for... Where to? What, in America or here? No, in, in, in general. I don't think there is. There's oh, no, they, I there's don't not, mean there's no huge, like in boxing, you've got like a governing body. Exactly, there is no the governing karate, body. Karate, you've got the governing body. Got a governing body. With MMA, right, there right. is no governing body. They just body. have the Nevada Athletic State Commission. Yeah, but that, that covers gambling, for fuck's sake. It's like, it covers everything. It's not, yeah. it's not just MMA. So if there was a branded MMA organisation which belted the fighters, obviously we're not talking kids aren't going to be black belts. We're talking... A white belt, you have five different stripes on it. You have a red red stripe as you're striking. Your blue is your judo, your jujitsu. You have your judo, your wrestling, and then you have a cardio element as well. So you have to, you can't just be a kick-ass fucking jujitsu guy, but not be able to do five rounds. You have to be able to fulfill every single criteria for every single belt. And in the same way, like jujitsu, takes two years to go from a white to a blue belt, and then you have five grades on that belt. Each one steps you up a level. By the time you get to a black belt, you must be able to pretty much run a fucking marathon, lift strong weights for your body weight in, in relation to your body weight and your size, be an expert striker, an expert jiu-jitsu guy, an expert grappler. You have to be that level, and then that defines you as your MMA practitioner. And it's more like someone's saying there are purple, uh, you know, purple belt in MMA. That to me is more advantageous than a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I get that they could be goals for people. Yeah, and also that um, as well. That's the most important thing. I'm never going to step in a cage, but I would love to have a blue belt in MMA. Like I wanted, I started doing jiu-jitsu purely so that I could have an accreditation the, to my name. The belt thing's a bit gay. It is a bit in, gay. In, in jiu-jitsu. Gay. No, it is. Oh, it is. No, it was gay as in, it, Even in jiu-jitsu. It's a bit ego -y and a little bit wet, but, but how many people... I know exactly. I, how many people I, fight and never fight? I agree fight? with you. But how many people go to is not supposed to be gay. Are you ever going to get into so, a... Do not say it's anything. not supposed to be gay. <laughs> no, but are you ever gonna? I am not gay. <laughs> are you ever gonna get in a cage? <laughs> am I? Yes, yeah. he is. Realistically. Yes, he is. Okay. I think I will. He doesn't know yeah. it yet, but yeah. that I think motherfucker I okay. I need to, So yeah. your fight record. So what's the first thing somebody? If he you see someone, I train MMA. The first thing they turn around and say is, "Oh, what's your fight record?" Most most people do. Anyone that's interested in it. And it's like, well, I, I don't, I don't fight. <laughs> zero and zero. Zero and zero, exactly. <laughs> and but, zero. Have a lost. If you train, <laughs> if you say, if you say to someone, if <laughs> someone is jujitsu, does jujitsu, and they and they go, oh, I'm a three strike purple belt in jujitsu. You don't go, wow, how many competitions have you fought in? That nullifies that ability because it comes part and parcel with it. To get that high up in jujitsu, of course you've competed. It doesn't ever, and losing doesn't matter. You could do. A hundred rolls in competition, lose half of them, but no one ever goes, oh, I'm 50 and 50. It's just, I'm a three-strike purple belt. And that ability in MMA, it means that you're not counting the losses, you're counting the goals. You have reached a level which, for people who are amateurs or part-timers or just hobbyists... It makes it more... Money-orientated as well. It means that smaller gyms can gain, people, can gain people... Can gain people who, they don't want to compete. I remember when, we first, when I first started yeah. at the Lair, we had... Eight, eight to nine guys that were wanting about to fight. About twelve guys. About oh, twelve no, no. guys that wanted oh, to fight. What? No, yeah, yeah. So about we, we were lucky. We had about we had a good squad. people. Eight wanted to fight. Yeah, but the other seven. The going. But the other seven got nothing for their hard work. They got nothing to prove, nothing to show. But it's the enjoyment. Like I do a lot of it because oh, I yeah. just enjoy it. And Absolutely, if, but yeah. if there was, imagine if there was that <laughs> extra level of pride because you have achieved something. 